gonna lose all your photos. Hey guys, Omar here. Sorry for the dramatic title, but it's actually something I tell myself all the time in order to maintain the level of paranoia you kind of need in order to keep your family photos and my client photos safe. So today I'm going to share some things I've done to keep my photos safe and what keeps me up at night is knowing that no matter what you do, whatever system you have, nothing is 100% super safe. So for those of you new here, my name is Omar Gonzalez. I'm a professional photographer in the New Jersey, New York area. I shoot mostly portraits and events. And part of my job, an important job, is to keep my clients, photographs, their memories safe. We are all at different levels, so I, am, I know I'm talking to people that have zero backups, and I also know that I'm talking to other professional photographers. So keep that in mind that I'm talking to different groups at different times, depending on what level you're at. And make sure you check the comments, because people around here are really nice, and they always want to share what they know and what they've used, and it may be something that I'm not talking about in this video. Now, we should probably start with the most common type of photography, phone photography. And we're starting there because, you know, most of the pictures that we take on here can be backed up easily. Anything that's on your phone, let's say you lose your phone, how do you get your pictures back? You should be a member of some kind of cloud. So for the Pixel phone here, I pay for 200 gigabytes and any photos I take with the Pixel get backed up to the cloud. The same thing with iCloud, you can just, you know, pay for storage on iCloud and back up your photos there. The one issue with that is that you're paying forever. And as your collection grows and the more photos you take, you have to pay more and pay for more, uh, you know, data. Your other option with the phone, which is a little bit more labor intensive, is you have to connect your phone and back up your, your photos manually. So you can connect your phone to a computer, put them on the computer, or put them on an external hard drive. I would highly recommend getting a cloud service because it's not just for photos, it's also for your contacts and your emails and your passwords and all that stuff is stored in a cloud, um, you know, whether you have an iPhone or an Android device. Okay, let's start with when all the electricity dies and the AI has taken over. One great way to back up your photos or at least have your photos with you is to print them. I know that sounds crazy. You're probably thinking about what am I going to do with my digital files? But believe it or not, this part of the process is the one that we get to enjoy the most because most of this data management stuff is not very glamorous. But I made a video about this. I made an entire book of my favorite photographs of my kids of them not looking in the camera. And so the entire book is just them being. And we put this out on the coffee table and it's probably the whole, the, the, the thing that means the most is actually having this book. So think about making books and printing. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get to the boring stuff, moving zeros and ones around. <laughs> So raise your hand if all your photos are just on one computer. Ooh, you're being bad, you in the back. <laughs> I used to be that way, just have them all on one computer. And then I think the first thing I did was when Time Machine was, you know, unveiled that your computer can have a backup, I would have a hard drive hooked up with Time Machine. And that was my backup. It's like if anything happens to the computer, I can always have a backup of the photos. The only problem with any computer is that it will fill up, it will slow down, and it's also not a backup. But you can buy external hard drives that you plug in, and you can copy all those files over, and now they live on here. So if you lose your computer, obviously you can have them on an external hard drive. I did this for a long time where I was backing things up onto different hard drives, and then I would put little dates on them. This is from 2011. And the problem with the system is it just became an insane sort of where is that picture? Let me plug in 2011. Let me find that. The computer gets so full that you put everything on hard drives and just store the hard drives. And so it wasn't very organized putting things on little drives. But if you're first getting started, this is the first emergency thing you need to do is get yourself a hard drive and at least copy all your memories onto it. 
Now the next thing you're supposed to do, it's known as the 3 two, one rule, is you have to have three copies of your data, one on the computer, one on this little hard drive, and you're supposed to put one somewhere else. So you can copy it onto a second hard drive and put it off location. In case you get robbed or God forbid your house burns down, you have this at your parents' house, let's just say. Or instead of this little hard drive, what you could do is put everything up to the cloud. And the cloud, you're gonna have to sort of research how much it is per month and how much it is per year, but it's just like all the streaming services, you're gonna just be paying forever. And what I use and what I use with my clients and my family work is I put all my photographs on SmugMug. And the reason I love SmugMug is because, first of all, the pictures look beautiful on the website, but they have unlimited photos. You don't ever have to delete any photos. You could just put them all there. And also SmugMug works great with Lightroom. So in Lightroom, when I'm working on family photos, I can actually publish the photos from Lightroom to the cloud and they live there. And by the way, SmugMug, if you don't want to use Google Photos and you don't want to use iCloud, SmugMug also allows you to back up your phone photos continuously. So you just have your, all your backup of your phone. Now, SmugMug can't back up your files or your contacts. So that's why I still recommend having the cloud for your phone. But at least if you're concerned about photos, SmugMug is great for keeping all your memories there. It also takes video and they have some options to save raw files. So I moved onto something like this. And this is the GTEC drive. This is like a drive that has two uh, SATA drives inside. So the way I would use this GTEC drive is this I set up as what was called a RAID 1. A RAID 1 is you have two drives inside of this guy. And what they do is they mirror each other. And the thought here is that when if one of them just dies or the, like the spinning wheel dies, you can take out the copy that's good and then you can replace the broken drive and re you can rebuild your RAID 1. And so RAID 1 was a good way to have two copies of my client work. So I would put two here and then one on the cloud. The only issue with RAID 1 is it's not really a backup. It's just mirroring the same drive. So if something goes corrupt or wrong with one of the drives, it'll put it onto the other drive and then you have corruption everywhere. So what I used to do for a long time was have this working drive and then when the year was over, I would take one of them out and I would call it the archive and I would put it in one of these pretty little cases. So this is my 2015 archive drive with old jobs, with old family stuff and then I have a bunch of these in a drawer. Yikes. <laughs> so, this also worked for a long time until again, your data just builds and builds and builds and you start to have a lot of these drives. Another way you can go with the GTEC drive or any kind of two you know, system drive is you can have a working drive, which is an SSD drive. You can work this off your computer and then you can have this SSD drive continuously copy or mirror onto this drive, which is more of an archive drive. The difference in speed is incredible when you work off SSD. Working off spinning drives, a lot of time you're, you know, the, the drives put themselves to sleep to save energy. They're loud, their fans are loud. Working off a small SSD is a game changer. You just have to be careful because some of these guys, some of these little SSD drives, there's so many of them on the market and um, I wouldn't trust any drive. <laughs> So anytime you work with these little SSD drives, just make sure that you know they're, again, you're gonna lose all your photos and videos. Have a way that it can continuously copy or have a mirrored copy onto your two drives here. Now, what was nice about these GTEC drives is they were uh, da daisy chainable. You were able to hook up one to another, to another, to another. So I ended up having four, some of them for video, some of them for photo. And with all of them on and their fans, it actually would get really warm in this office. <laughs> so that worked totally fine. For a while there, I was daisy chaining these guys and sort of having one as a working drive and then hooking it up to another one that was a archive drive. But again, we had the same problem where when the year is over, the drives fill up, you have to store them away. And then if I wanted to access, like for example, some of my clients wanna make an album 
and their mitzvah was in 2017, I would have to go get this drive and then I would put it in a little toaster, which I could read on my computer and then read the files from there. Another way to go, which is something I did, is to go with a NAS. And my first foray into the NAS network attached storage was this little two-bay Synology here. And it, it turns out that this ended up being a great media server. All my music was on here and all our movies that we purchased were on here and our home movies are on here. And we could watch them on the TV downstairs. You could listen on devices. So instead of this becoming a photo, because it kind of would fill up with all the photos that I had, I decided to take the photos off this and what became the, you know, what originally was the idea to hold all the photographs became more of a media server. So I started thinking, what is a good way to have like what this does, but also what this does, which I love. So what I ended up getting was I bought a eight bay Synology uh, NAS, which, has, I put a bunch of drives in there, it has like 40 terabytes of data. Now having all that data was really liberating and I highly recommend a NAS for if you're a photographer or videographer because it's kind of liberating in the fact that you can have all these drives and not take them out and store them. You can actually replace drives and your data will be on the NAS. That also eliminated the fact that I had to like you know, package up and keep all these drives. Everything that's on these drives is on the NAS already because there's so much capacity to it. And it's also expandable. And that's what I like the most about the NAS. So um, the way I work now is for my clients, I have a working drive, which is just an SSD, but I don't trust these guys at all. <laughs> so everything gets backed up to the NAS right away. And uh, the images, of course, are up on the cloud on SmugMug right away. I understand that eight bays is a little overkill. So what should you get started with? So I actually got to talk to the people at Synology, super nice. And I said, hey, why don't you send something over that we can show everyone that is more manageable than my monster? So this is the 1523 Plus, and what I love about the NAS is it almost feels kind of like an end game. Everything that I've done before this has always seemed like a stepping stone with the storing of the drives and the drives filling up. The drives that are in here are the ones that are recommended by the company. I use them on my other NAS and they've worked. Oh my God, I'm a little superstitious. I'll just mouth it. <laughs> Uh, the Seagate NAS drives have been really killer and um, none of them, you know, haven't done the thing that's bad, if you know what I mean. So I, I, I think this is a nice sweet spot to get started. This five bay uh, drive is great for redundancy uh, in case one of the drives fails, but also it has all those other benefits with the NAS. You can access all your files. Uh, if I'm in a cafe somewhere and I want to access this, I can. It's, it's like my own personal Dropbox. We have our home movies we can put on here, which we can stream through Plex. That's a service that you can use to stream on your phone. You can stream everything from this onto your TVs. Um, what else? I don't do it, but you can use this uh, NAS as a surveillance system. If you want to like, you know, have a security system installed into your house, everything could be recorded on this. My office printer is hooked up to my NAS so I can print from downstairs or from other devices. But really the best thing is that I don't need to grab the toaster and pop this hard drive in to find files from 2017. I could be in a cafe, I could be overseas, as long as I can hook up, I could use something called Quick Connect, which will hook up to my NAS and I could access files. So this to me is kind of like I said, an end game. And what I highly recommend if you're trying to save all your own photos, which brings, brings me back to the cloud. You know, this is still not a backup. If something happens to your house or this gets stolen, all your data is gone. So one thing you could do with this NAS, which is kind of my, my idea since I already have the 8-bay, is that this could live in someone else's house. So if I put this in someone else's house, this, the 8-bay, um, I keep pointing to the closet because that's where it is, but the 8-bay can talk to this guy and back everything up automatically at night. 
And so you can kind of have your own personal Dropbox. So which do I recommend for backing up your data? Well, it depends what stage and budget you are in your life. But just know that to me, this is the end game. The end game is having a NAS that is expandable and that I can sort of access my photos everywhere. We have our home movies on it. We've got movies that we've purchased on it. And our photos and memories are, you know what I was going to say. All right, I'll see you guys next time.